Let's look at the really powerful track changes functionality that's built into Word for iPad under the review ribbon. So here I've got a document, perhaps it's a document that somebody sent to me to make some changes or perhaps it's one of my own documents and I just want to keep track of any changes I make in case I change my mind later. So the first thing I need to do is go to the review ribbon and turn on track changes just by tapping that little switch. So now everything we change in this document will be tracked and will be shown to us in various different ways. So let's have a go. Uh, in this first sentence here, this is a good sentence. I'm going to tap after it there and I'm going to add a new sentence afterwards. It really is. And you can see it's a slightly different colour and it's underlined and that's an indication that this is new text that's been added since I started tracking changes. So that's how an addition gets shown. Let's uh, look at the second sentence. Um, this is also a good sentence but it has some baggage that needs to go. So yeah, I think I know what needs to be done there. I'm going to select the second half of that sentence and delete it. So there we go. Now it says this is also a good sentence and then you can see it's, it's struck out. That, that wording there is struck out. It's gone. That's how, how a deletion is shown. While I'm here I'm also going to emphasise that word also by making it italic. I'm just going to double tap to select the word. I'm going to go quickly to the home ribbon and tap the italics key. And then I'm going to go back to the review ribbon. But you see what's happened here is it's um, it's changed it to italics and it's also put a little line out to this special area over here which I call the, the markup margin. And it's put here what it calls a balloon that says Alan Vickers formatted this font italic a few seconds ago. So it's tracked a format change in a different way. It's shown it in a bubble over in the in the markup margin. Okay, so far so good. So this last sentence, this could be a good sentence too. I'm going to change could be into is. So I'm just going to double tap on could, drag the selection over to include the B, and I'm going to over type with the word is. So of course the new is replaces the selection, but the selection is shown as struck out, it's effectively a deletion, and the is is shown underlined because that's the new the new word. So by default, this is how changes are shown. Additions are shown underlined, deletions are shown as struck through text, format changes are shown in the markup margin. And comments are too, actually. Let's say I want to add a comment at the end of that last sentence. I go up to the review ribbon here and hit the plus on the comment icon. So to add a new comment. You see that appears over in the markup margin too. And I'll just ask the question, do we need any more sentences? Just a little note for me or someone else later. So again, comments are shown in the markup margin. So that's how they're all shown by default, but you're in control as to how all this is shown by going up to this menu option called Display for Review. So we tap that. You see that at the moment, the ticked tells us that we're showing all markup. We've got some other choices which we'll look at in a minute. And then down below, this Show Markup menu option lets you choose exactly what gets shown. So if I tap that, you see that at the moment we've chosen to show comments and any insertions and deletions and any format changes. And we're only showing comments and formatting as balloons over in this markup margin. But if we wanted to, we could show everything over there, which we'll do in a minute. So if you think comments are clustering up your uh, document, you can just tap to turn them off. And you see how that comment that I made has now disappeared. It's still there, it's just not displayed. If I go back to the display for review men menu, show markup, turn comments back on, it's back again. I'm just going to go back into that menu again, show markup, and you can see you're also able to filter which reviewers comments are actually shown. So if, if a number of people were working on this document over time, by tapping on the reviewers option there, you get a list of all of the different authors and you can either see all reviewers like I'm seeing now, or you can tick on or off individual reviewers and only see their comments, which is really handy when you're reviewing a, a document that's full of changes from lots of different people. Now, finally on this menu here, we're gonna show all revisions as balloons over in the markup margin. So not just comments, not just formatting, but all the insertions and deletions as well. So if I tap that, now you see what we're looking at now is pretty much what the final output would look like 
and any deletions and so on are now over in the format margin out of the way. So the first one says, this is a good sentence. And then I added that sentence, it really is. So it's in my final copy, so that's why it's there. It's underlined still to show it was an insertion. And there's a little pointer off to the markup margin that tells me that Alan Vickers inserted it. In the second sentence, I italicised the also, and that's over in the margin like before. But also, do you remember I deleted the entire end of that sentence? Well, it's not even shown now because it wouldn't show in the final output. But there is still a pointer out to the margin that says Alan Vickers deleted, but it has some baggage that needs to go. So it's not been lost. It's just been cleared up from my effectively the final printout here. And then you remember in the last sentence, I replaced could be with the word is. So now it just shows the final result. This is a good sentence too. And over in the margin, it says Alan Vickers deleted could be and inserted the is. So this is just a good way to see if you, if you printed out the final version of the document and then you marked it up with a biro, say, this is what you would do. You would underline the bits you added to show someone I added that bit. And you would show deletions by putting a little biro line out to your margin and writing what it is that you deleted. So it sort of mimics that. If we go to the display for review menu again, just to clarify this. It looks like it does because we're in all markup mode. If I wanted, we could go to no markup at all. And that would give us genuinely the final result. This is a good sentence. It really is. That was the bit I added. This is also italicized a good sentence and all that bit I deleted is not even shown. And this is a good sentence too. That's where a replaced could be. That is the final output because now we're showing no markup. Another way to show markup is to show the original text with the markup on top. So not the final result with the markup, but the original text with the markup. So if I tap that, and now over here in the main body, this is, it's almost like you've got a printout of the original document and you're trying to highlight the changes you made. So in this case, the words that you deleted are on the page, so you would strike through them, wouldn't you? So that's why, imagine you took a biro to that and you, str you strike through it. But the additions aren't there, so you just draw a line to the margin and you say, I, what you inserted, it really is. So it's a different way of showing the same markups, almost like print out the original and mark it up, or, or the all markup is printing out the final copy and marking it up. And if you want to see the original as it was unblemished, with no changes at all, you can just show original, and that's the original text. So that's how to understand those four modes there. All markup is like the final copy with some markup on it, no markup. Is the final copy nice and clean? Original with markup is the original words marked up, and original is just the original words clean. So if I go back to all markup, one final thing to say is that um, just to help you see which parts of the documents have changed, uh, over in the left margin, there's these vertical bars you'll see spread throughout your document on paragraphs that have changed. That helps guide your eye to what's changed. And the other thing to say is that these uh, balloons over here are sensitive to touch as well. So if you were to touch one of them, you get a bit more information about when the change was made, a few minutes ago in this case here. If this was a really long document as well, you can tap to quickly navigate to the changes because it highlights the changes as well. When you've finished tracking changes, just turn off the mode, go back to the review ribbon and turn off the switch. And now any changes you make from now on won't be tracked in this way. But those original changes are still tracked. They're all still recorded in the document. And if you now send this document off to somebody else or you open it again yourself a few days later, you can then go through these changes and review them one by one and decide whether you want to keep them or not. So that's how to turn on track changes mode and how to decide how to view your tracked changes in different display modes.